Welcome to our garage. My name is Jonathan. I recently made a video on the installation of a grill mesh guard on the front of my new M2. That right there. And in making that video, I realized that uh, I enjoyed it. And I downloaded some video editing software, learned how to edit videos a little bit. I'm still a beginner. Um, but I thought that I would make some more videos for YouTube and give a not only an ownership perspective on the new M2, but also a combination ownership perspective on the M2 and this 2020 Shelby GT350, which we also bought new three years ago. And in coming up with ideas on videos to make, um, I decided, well, what's unique here is owning both of these cars together. Um, they're actually very complimentary for a two car garage. And so I came up with five ways in which they are. Um, and so I'm gonna share those five ways. I'm gonna do a cold start for, with each car at the end of the video so you can hear both of them. Um, and yeah, just get, give this YouTube thing a go and see how it goes. Hope you enjoy, thank you. The first way in which these cars are complementary is the Shelby is a six-speed manual transmission, high revving V8, uh, it's raw, loud, which you'll get to hear at the end of the video. And it's really a lot of fun to drive. Uh, the M2 so far, my short ownership experience, is also a lot of fun to drive. Uh, but my M2 is an automatic with paddle shifters instead of a manual. So it's a completely different driving experience. It's a turboed uh, V6, the same that they put in the M3 and the M4. Um, so it's a quick car, it's a fun car, but because of the transmission, uh, primarily, they are completely different uh, daily driving experiences. In order to demonstrate the second way in which these cars are complementary, I'm going to have to hop on the inside. The Shelby is a more analog experience. You have a lot of buttons, you have a smaller screen, uh, you have the analog gauges, all the information that you need is provided. And the Ford does do a good job with their sync system, I think. Um, but this is not a high tech situation. The BMW on the other hand is all tech. When you first reach for the door, it un as it unlocks, the mirror opens. You see the beautiful leather interior, the bright colors, the screen that goes all the way across the dash animation of the car as it's loading up and then it welcomes you by name with the little racing helmet. I think I was able to choose that icon. I chose the racing helmet if I recall correctly. That was uh, a big day at the dealership when I was picking it up so a lot of things were happening. We have the carbon fiber surround, carbon fiber paddle shifters which are really cool looking. I like those a lot. They feel good in the hand too. Uh, more carbon fiber trim down here. Little piano black, but you don't really touch that too much. Nice uh, lighting effect. You can change those colors as well. Cool little colors over there in the in the door panels. Yeah, it's just a completely experience on this interior versus the Shelby. So uh, that helps them be uh, completely different driving experiences as well. The third way in which these cars are complementary is that the M2 feels like a smaller car and drives like a smaller car. It feels more nimble. It feels quicker in its movements. Um, it has more low end torque. So it feels a little quicker off the line. Uh, whereas the Shelby feels like a heavier car. Now more nimble doesn't necessarily mean better handling on a racetrack. I think if these were on a racetrack together, um, obviously I haven't had the M2 too long yet, only a couple weeks, um, but just based on the stats and the feel that I've experienced in driving both. Um, if they were both on a racetrack, I would bet on the Shelby GT350 to be a faster car on the track. Um, but the M2 feels like a smaller car when you're driving it on the road. I used to own one of the original S2000s over 20 years ago, a car I wish I had never gotten rid of. Um, and this is the first car I've owned in 20 years that reminds me a little bit of what it felt like to drive the S2000. The fourth way I've come up with in which these cars differentiate from one another and yet are complementary is in the daily driving experience. 
my office is only about seven miles from our house and it takes me about 15 minutes to get there. Uh, the Shelby, you have to warm the engine up, the oil temperature to 180 before you get over 4,000 RPMs. Yes, it does rev to over 8,000 RPM, but you're not supposed to experience that until you get up to 180 degrees. And most days, um, it doesn't get up to 180 until I'm almost at work. So I don't really get the full pleasure of that high rev V8 in my daily commute most, most days. Uh, whereas with the M2, I just hop in, start it up and go, and don't have to even think about that, except right now I'm in the break-in period, so I don't go over 4,000 RPMs uh, until I get out of the break-in period. Um, but that's different because that's temporary. That's not every time that I'm gonna be driving this car. The fifth way that these two cars are complementary yet completely different driving uh, is in the daily experience again. Uh, my office has an open parking lot that I park in. Um, and so I'm not really super happy to leave either one of them sit, just sitting out in the parking lot all day. Uh, but I feel like the M2 is more replaceable. They're still making them. Uh, they're not making the Shelby anymore. And so I feel like if something were to happen to either car sitting in the parking lot, whether it's weather or vandalization, the M2 is more replaceable. So I don't worry about it as much. Plus, I think these racing stripes probably draw more attention. Uh, if somebody was up to no good, they may target the Shelby over a what, what to most people looks like just another BMW sitting in the parking lot. One way in which they're not complimentary are the wheels. Anybody that's familiar with the Shelby GT350 knows how much brake dust these uh, high-performance brakes kick up, and it's almost impossible to keep these black wheels clean. And I swore I would never have black wheels on a high-performance car again after owning the Shelby for a few years. And, well, things happen. Uh, turns out that this M2 produces a lot of brake dust, too. Uh, these black wheels are equally hard to keep clean, but, man, they look good. So those are five ways I've come up with where these cars are uh, complementary with, with each other and make a good two-car garage pair. Um, maybe I'm sure there are many other ways that I'll come up with over the coming weeks and months as we make more videos together. Um, thank you for watching this one. And now I'll do a cold start for each and let you hear them. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm just getting started with this YouTube thing. Uh, it's new. It's fun. Uh, if you want to see more content, please like and subscribe. And we'll see you again in the future. Thank you.